Ramayana is a rare, rare literature, uh, very, very huge literature which runs for more than 20,000 verses. In such a huge literature, I never see anywhere uh, uh, a statement that proclaims that a human race is the uh, greatest race in the whole world. Humans are, su even, even this kind of statement, humans are superior to uh, all other species. Such kind of uh, statements are not coming in Ramayana and uh, it talks definitely about the coexistence of all species together. The same way we see uh, around us um, what are all the things we have, uh, animals, birds, uh, we see all these things as somehow we connect all these things to the uh, divine. That, that kind of mentality is there throughout India, not just through Ramayana, of course through all scriptures, any, any, any animal I think is connected to some uh, god. Okay, Peacock is connected to Subramanya, Skanda and uh, uh, Mouse is connected to Ganesha. Like that, uh, Monkey is connected to Hanuman, uh, Crow is connected to Shanishchara, so on and so forth. Like that, Garuda is connected to Vishnu and uh, Lion is connected to Durga. So, if a Hindu sees these animals and birds, he connects all these things with the gods and goddesses. Uh, he sees the divine in them. So, he coexists with uh, all these things. That's what I feel. In Ajurveda, a very profound statement comes. Namo matre prithivyai. Maham mataram prithivim higum sisham. Mama mata prithivi higum seeth. Salutations to the Mother Earth. May I not harm the Mother Earth. May the Mother Earth not harm me. I think this same statement is getting reflected in Mahabharata and Ramayana also, of course. Dharma Rakshati Rakshitaha. Uh, earth is replaced with Dharma, that's all. Hmm. So, Dharma, of course, literal meaning of Dharma in Sanskrit dictionary is nature. Today we have with us Dr. Ranganji. Dr. Ranganji is a scholar of Vedic literature and he is very passionate about Ramayana. In fact, it is through his adoration of the personality of Sri Rama that he started studying our scriptures and in a very appropriate way, he has created a organization to spread the Vedic messages. The name of the organization is Webolim, Web of Life Movement. So, Web of Life is very important for sustainable development. Web of Life is very important for the human well-being. Web of Life is very important for the well-being of all existence. And he has given this name. And his work on Ramayana one of the books I was fortunate to review, it contains such wonderful insights. He is a very traditional interpreter of Ramayana, but he could touch the most modern concepts with ease and it is very astonishing how he has been able to do that. So, uh, with all humility and pleasure, I invite you for this interaction that we are going to have. I am really uh, fortunate to have you here and have this conversation with you, Dr. Ranganji. Now, um, we will start with the basic question, sustainability. Sustainability is very much important, not because it is important for human beings, but because if human beings are to live, exist itself, the web of life has to be properly maintained. We have to understand with humility that we are a strand in the web of life. We are not at the top of the pyramid. This is an insight that today ecological sciences are telling us. That we are one of the many species that is inhabiting this planet. We are not the masters of creation. There are certain 
beliefs that says that the entire world is created for you for human enjoyment that God created the, all the animals and plants and the rivers and the mountains for the enjoyment of human being and that has led to over consumerism and that has led to the destruction of the ecosystems. On the other hand in our scriptures it is been that we are just one of the many animals, many, many species that are inhabiting the planet. But tell me uh, Dr. Vardhanji, in Ramayana, Rama is the hero and he is a human being. He is the central to Ramayana. So, how do when we say this, how do we substantiate that in Ramayana for example is human centric or is it taking into account all the species of creation with the same respect? Definitely it is a human story, no doubt in it, uh, written by a human being for humans. Uh, but it never says anywhere that uh, Hum, world is created for human beings or humans are born to rule the world and uh, in fact Ramayana is a rare, rare literature, uh, very, very huge literature which runs for more than 20,000 verses. In such a huge literature I never see anywhere uh, uh, a statement that proclaims that a human race is the uh, greatest race in the whole world. Humans are, su even, even this kind of statement, humans are superior to uh, all other species. Such kind of uh, statements are not coming in Ramayana and uh, it talks definitely about the coexistence of all species together. When Rama goes to the forest in Chitrakuta and uh, uh, Panchavati, uh, how he moves with the uh, plants and the trees, so on and so forth that is expressed and then uh, Jatayu, Vulture and his brother Sampati. Then after that uh, Vanaras, how should we see Vanaras? That is a different thing. Are they, uh, are they monkeys or uh, are they, uh, what to say, a separate uh, species regarding, uh, in, in, the, in the human world itself, they are, are they a separate race? That is a different thing. But anyhow, the monkey element of Vanaras is presented by Valmiki. Uh, whether they are monkeys or not, they are described as monkeys. Uh, it clearly shows how Valmiki respects monkeys <laughs> uh, and uh, recognizes monkeys. So, it is not just to ridicule or uh, put down these Vanaras. Uh, he described uh, them as monkeys. Some, some critics take in that way. Because Considering animals as inferior is not found in Valmiki Ramayana, it is very clear. Yes, so there is no idea of considering animals as inferior. So, if Valmiki describes Vanaras as monkeys, it definitely means that he, uh, he has, he recognizes a part of uh, role of uh, monkeys in this whole uh, earth life. That is what, that is how I view. Uh, for example, mm. uh, when Vibhishana comes for surrender mm. and uh, Lakshmana actually is very skeptical about Vibhishana, right? Mm. doubtful mm. about Sugriva. Vibhishana's mm. Uh, yes. mm. intention and Sugriva mm. also is yes, very, yes. Mm. but it was Hanuman who was also a Vanara whose yeah. advice actually mm. uh, gets reflected in the subsequent acceptance yes, yes. of Vibhishana. Yes, yes. Right? So, yes. we can say that uh, Hanuman was a vanara, yes, yes. Uh, becomes a very important uh, person and he is also in shown fact, Rama as… Rama says to Hanuman, I am indebted to you. Mm. After, uh, after getting his service, he is telling, I can't repay, that is what he says. Mm -hmm. So, in uh, Tamil Kampa Ramayanam, we have this uh, uh, wonderful statement that uh, with you I have become five. Ah, yes, yes. And can you give a elaboration on this particular aspect? Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it there in Valmiki also or? It is not there in Valmiki. Hmm. But uh, yeah, Brata Sugriva Panchamaha, yes. Sugriva is my fifth brother, Tamasmakam. This is, this is Bharata's, yes. Uh, while Bharata and Rama meet uh, in the Valmiki Ramayana after a long time, 
uh, he introduces Sugriva to Bharata. Then Bharata says to uh, Sugriva, you are our fifth brother. This is what he says. Maybe this may be the seed for Kamban. Kamban elaborates it. Guha is the fifth brother and uh, I think uh, he is the Sugriva or Hanuman is the sixth brother. Uh, seventh one is Vibhishana. Uh, this is how this brotherhood is getting extended. That, that Bhava is there in Valmiki, yes. So, uh, Ranganji, can you say that uh, hmm. Valmiki Ramayana is free from hmm. human bias and Valmiki Ramayana is also trans-species, that it, it transcends the species barriers? That is what I feel, yes. Hmm. yes. Hmm, hmm, hmm. And how it has reflected in your, in your experience, how it has reflected on the hmm. behavior of Indians in everyday life? Yeah, I have seen, yes. For example, uh, just before yesterday, uh, I, I was narrating the story. Mm. Uh, we entered into a reserved forest uh, in uh, nearby Koyamuthur, there is a village named Udumalai Petai. Uh, they organized my program and they took me to a reserved forest. Uh, the old man who was driving for us, he was sitting in the car in the forest and we are going for a walking. Um, and uh, uh, those who are coming with me for walking, they said, eatables are there in the car, please take care. And a uh, uh, lot of monkeys are roaming. Then we went, when we come back, uh, close the door and uh, be safe inside. This is what uh, the instruction was. He opened all the doors, he is the owner of the car. And uh, he had all these eatables giving to all yeps, which are... Uh, going round the car. He was uh, enjoying that. So, we asked, uh, what is this? Uh, the people with me, they asked, they are surprised and asked. Uh, I said, uh, uh, you should take care, but you are doing like this. Then he said, uh, uh, those are all okay, those are all fine. These apes are coming, they are shouting. Those are all fine, but uh, it's Hanuman, no? <laughs> that was the expert. <laughs> so, we have to feed. <laughs> That kind of tendency, uh, it's an example, it's a simple example, but it touched my heart. The same way we see uh, around us, um, what are all the things we have, uh, animals, birds, uh, we see all these things as, somehow we connect all these things to the uh, divine. That, that kind of mentality is there throughout India, not just through Ramayana. Of course, through all scriptures, any, any, any animal I think is connected to some uh, god. Okay, peacock is connected to Subramanya, Skanda and uh, uh, mouse is connected to Ganesha. Like that, uh, monkey is connected to Hanuman, uh, crow is connected to Shanishchara, so on and so forth. Like that, Garuda is connected to Vishnu and uh, uh, lion is connected to Durga. So, if a Hindu sees these animals and birds, he connects all these things with the gods and goddesses. Uh, he sees the divine in them. So, he coexists with uh, all these things. That is what I feel. In Ajurveda, a very profound statement comes. Namo matre prithivyai. Maham mataram prithivim higum sisham. Mama mata prithivi higum seeth. Salutations to the mother earth. May I not harm the mother earth, may the mother earth not harm me. I think this same statement is getting reflected in Mahabharata and Ramayana also of course. Dharma rakshati rakshitaha. Uh, earth is replaced with dharma, that's all. Hmm. So, dharma of course, literal meaning of dharma in Sanskrit dictionary is nature. Uh, Prithvi is also, Prithvi also can be taken as nature. Uh, that's a thing. <laughs> Talking about Prithvi. Hmm. Hmm. Um, whenever, because uh, you are an expert scholar in Ramayana, both a scholar and a devotee of Ramayana, and that is a rare combination because scholars always uh, dissect Ramayana and they do not have the ability to get into the real intricacies of Ramayana because they are not devotees. So, being a devotee and a scholar is a great thing. Now, there are a lot of uh, women here. So, there has been now a growing criticism that Ramayana is a kind of a male chauvinist epic and that uh, Rama, the way he treated Sita was wrong and all those kind of things. Okay. And even when we look at the calendar art, 
for example uh, we find that uh, rama putting his uh, feet on uh, the stone and the stone becomes agalya the shows of the male god's feet is needed for the liberation of women but is there any actual proof for this particular uh, thing in uh, valmiki ramayana what i have heard is that in valmiki ramayana actually yeah. rama goes and prostrates before agalya yes, yes. he doesn't uh, this number one is, yes. number two what is actually the relation between sita and uh, rama that is depicted in uh, valmiki ramayana no, no, and what we question. have to learn from it yes yes it's very interesting question the first question uh, gautama's curse is adrishyatvam bhavishyasi you will be you will remain invisible this uh, I, i don't know whether it can be taken as curse or not Uh, for a time being he he wants to depart he is upset he wants to depart to himalayas so till i return you be invisible in this forest because if he is not there uh, again insecurity will come to her in fact it's a comfort for her to be invisible and do sadhana she was doing her spiritual sadhana there and uh, she he also said gautama also said when rama will come here you will become visible uh, this is what he said and when rama comes there ahalya becomes visible this is this is what we see in valmiki's ramayana of course later uh, uh, in later ramayanas we see even in kalidasa we see rama pada rajasa anugraha uh, she was uh, um, uh, the dust of uh, lotus feet of rama touched her and uh, she became a woman that story also was not created for male shamanism <laughs> it should not be taken in that way uh, that is also based on devotion only uh, they have uh, um, changed the story in that way so since rama is a male ahalya is a woman therefore he has to place the foot yes. uh, that kind that of the, thought was not there in them <laughs> it is more because of bhakti rasa thing. yeah for bhakti rasa only they uh, remade the story in that way uh, that is one thing sita rama relationship is a very interesting thing um um as the veda says sakha saptapada bhava um, in the vedic ritual in the matrimonial ritual through the saptapada saptapadi ritual may we become friends in the commentary also runs in this way sakha here means uh, samana khyati equal status let us have equal status that, that is what the commentary is so uh, it seems that it is maintained throughout the life of uh, sita and rama uh, Uh, in uh, many places uh, we see this how um, is uh, sita uh, they are uh, they are very much deeply affectionate both of them sita and rama but uh, in this affection we see a very strong friendship uh, that is there uh, while rama is going to forest she also accompanies while accompanying she says agrataste gamishyami uh, let me go first may you follow me this is what oh, she says oh. yes this is a statement of uh, sita devi uh, and uh, in fact when she has some difference of opinion in the forest rama swarred swarred rama promised to kill uh, 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 yes khara and dushana at that time sita devi uh, has a difference of opinion we should be do all these things in the forest uh, we have come here for tapasya uh, that opinion also she shares while she is sharing a difference of opinion rama is uh, patiently listening and while he is uh, uh, responding there also she ramachandra uh, he is not scolding her he is uh, uh, he is responding in a very noble way in a gentle way toyai voktam idam vachaha Uh, i am also telling the same thing which you feel you are talking about universal welfare for that only you are asking me to practice ahimsa i am also touching the same topic universal welfare that is how rama starts and uh, in fact in introduction and conclusion of rama's uh, rama's talk you see only the uh, glory or extolling of sita so in these places where sita and rama converse in general throughout the epic and also uh, while he is talking to bharadwaja uh, and also to lakshmana uh, will, uh, please uh, suggest me a place um, uh, where i can dwell where sita will feel comfortable that kind of statement 
and later also to Lakshmana, uh, we can choose a place uh, to live in Panchavati, where you and Sita will be comfortable. <laughs> this is what Rama. Then he, him also he says, but uh, first to preference to Sita, then to Lakshmana, then to him. That is how it comes. Throughout the epic, we can see these kinds of things. He takes care of Sita in such a way, Sancha, chi, sancha Chittam Bilobayan. He, he gladdens his heart to entertain her in, in Chitrakuta to make her happy. This is what uh, is conveyed. Sita also says, Kimpunaryo Gunashlagyaha, uh, Sanukrosho Jitendriya, Sanukroshaha, he is compassionate to me, means uh, he understands my misery while I come to forest. Jitendriyaha, he is a restrained person's person. He doesn't know anyone other than me. Uh, regarding this conjugal love, Jitendriyaha, um, uh, Pitruvatu, Matruvatu, Priyaha. Um, and I feel that I am in uh, my, what is that, um, mother's house. And he takes care of me like uh, my father and mother, Pitruvatu, Matruvatu, Priyaha. Uh, this is what Sita talks about Rama. Well, uh, Anasuya is uh, glorifying Sita. Anasuya says, you gave up everything and came with Rama. You are really great. For that, Sita says, what is surprise if I came with him? Uh, he is like this and he is all virtuous. How can I leave him? <laughs> ah, that is very, very interesting. But uh, then always the topic moves to uh, Agni Pravesa, as you correctly said in another one conversation that we were having about the same topic. You pointed out it is not Agni Pariksha, it is Agni Pravesa. And, uh, can you elaborate on this particular aspect in a detailed manner so that we will understand what yeah. actually happened in that? In Agni Pravesha, okay. Yeah. Uh, Why should he be so rude to her? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I, I don't see it as Agni Pariksha, this is what he, is, he was telling. Um, Agni Pariksha means uh, testing through fire. Uh, that is That can be t called as Agni Pariksha. Rama doesn't conduct any test, first of all. Rama never says that if he, if he go through Valmiki's Ramayana, never says to Sita, I am going to test you, you enter into fire, you come back, then only I will accept. He does not talk like that. Perhaps he is ruder than what I present now, Nagni Paritsha. He does not tell her, let me test you and come back and I will accept you. He is, he is even, even ruder. What he says is, he is just hurting her. Uh, I can't accept you. Okay. You were for 10 months in Ravana's house. How can I accept you? This is what he says. On hearing this, uh, Sita became angry. This is what is happening. As per Valmiki's Ramayana, the whole thing happens. When we uh, go through the scripture or um, Somebody said uh, we should not use the word scripture <laughs> in the previous session. <laughs> okay. When we go through this Shastra or Kavya, whatever it may be, okay, uh, we understand that Rama provoked Sita. Rama wanted to see Sita standing on her own leg. And uh, um, it is not that he is testing the chastity of Sita and all. But what he expects is, let me create a hard situation in which uh, 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 she can stand on her own leg and prove it, prove, prove chastity or, uh, uh, yeah, we can say, we can say and uh, may, uh, two, two results of this. One, may the people understand the glory of Sita, greatness of Sita. So, see, Sita's glory will grow, that is one thing. Second one, Sita herself had yeah, mindset, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, kind of uh, what to guilt say. Guilt feeling or something? Not even guilt feeling. It's not a guilt feeling. It, it can be called as a complex, no. Um, guilt feeling means uh, I am guilty, I am a sinner. It, it's, uh, it's not like that. Okay, everybody is watching me. Yeah, everybody is watching me. How the people will take me? How the people will understand me? And uh, uh, that kind of uh, suffering was there. Anxiety, we can say. An anxiety was there in the heart. To demolish that anxiety, people should understand the greatness of Sita. People will understand the greatness of Sita only when Rama turns a villain. 
that's a so people will start to talk ill of rama by that uh, oh so rama has ta- rama has spoken in this way in that way uh, sita is very great uh, and why rama has talked like this that kind of uh, um, people talk rama wanted to hear in so fact. instead of a so negative light falling on sita now the yes. negative light would fall on rama Fa- fall rama, on rama was actually making sacrificing his own yes. greatness for the sake of sita yes yes sir. okay and the way in which sita talks there that also uh, it can be quoted a lot for feminism in fact <laughs> she is not uh, there uh, what to say she is not becoming hopeless uh, crying and falling down it's not like that she is telling uh, uh, um, you have no right to give up me like this because this agni sakshika vivaha in front of uh, great elders and i i i do pratigya pratigya in english <laughs> okay wow. okay uh, yeah. i ta- i i swear or i i make pratigya uh, that my chastity is as pure as yours this is what she says see charitre naiva te shape i my chastity is uh, as pure as your character in this uh, uh, we are not doubting each other and all but uh, anyhow you talked these harsh words so that uh, um uh, let me not uh, uh, what to say um I, i shall do whatever i know what to do now she says this and then she says to lakshmana to light up the fire and a very intrinsic statement of valmiki valmiki is very open he never hides anything and all uh, so valmiki says amarshavashama pannaha lakshmana became angry uh, raghavananda maichata he saw the face of rama on seeing the face of rama he understood what is going to happen savigyaya tatas chandam ramasya akara suchitam and uh, without a little least of hesitation he went and uh, uh, made the fire then sita entered into fire and uh, came back so that sita's greatness can be revealed to the world this is what uh, we see in valmiki's ramayana and now mm. uh, two questions here one is that the same rama behaved in a very different way with respect to ahilya mm yeah <laughs> there also you see a symmetry for example in ahilya also indra came in disguise here ravana came in disguise and then there agalya knowingly she yielded to indra whereas here she did not yield and she fought till the end right so here are two entirely different things with the kind of an asymmetry and rama behaves in two different and in ways. between also hmm. in between also sugriva's uh, wife was uh, usarpad by vali no prayas chitta uh, for ruma directly sugriva accepted it rama did not insist anything for that mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. so how do we uh, di- how do we explain this particular discrepancy in the behavior because there at least in the case of sugriva rama was not directly involved that rama goes and prostrates in front of uh, agalya so how do how do you assess call i don't know whether you are uh, asking a question or contributing no i am asking you actually as <laughs> i a, see it's a, it's as a, a contribution as a bhakta and as a scholar both yeah, yeah. how do you take this yes yes i see it as a contribution for what i am telling okay uh, that's a thing uh, here uh, the only intention for rama is to uh, um mm, mm, uh, enhance the greatness of sita devi for that he made all this drama so that is not his uh, real nature okay so you have to uh-huh. see not this as an isolated behavior yes, the entire yes. thing you have to see this yeah yeah that in is uh, in other two contexts mm. he behaved in a very gentle way mm. here uh, he behaved in a rude way only to mm. uh, explain so it actually substantiate what you are yes, doing yes saying. that's what i am doing right uh-huh. okay uh-huh. that is a very beautiful thing mm-hmm. and the second thing is the same lakshmana was scolded by sita when and uh, almost she used the same words that right now i would light the fire and i would enter and i would kill myself uh, in in the uh, in the third book aranya kanda yes uh, uh, uh. and now the same thing comes back here is it yes. kind of a poetic justice that 
the poet was creating because it is the same Lakshmana who is doing the same thing. Yes, here. yes. Uh, that also, the commentators uh, think like that. That also can be added. Nothing wrong. Even though Valmiki doesn't talk anything about it. That kind of, uh, the, for that also, this, this could have happened. That is also there. That's what I feel. Uh -huh. And mm. we come to the next book of yours, which is about Uttar Ramayana. Okay. And Uttar Kanta, Uttar Ramayana. And uh, you have taken a very uh, radical stand there. And you have said that uh, this could not have been written by Valmiki. Yes, yes. Can you tell why? Yes, because, uh, because of the various reasons, almost in every chapter, we don't see Valmiki style. In this, uh, yes, Rama's behavior changed from uh, Valmiki Ramayana yeah. to here. True, true, true. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, okay, let me see this. Uh, uh, in in several places, Rama insists. Rama says that uh, uh, he would not give up his uh, 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 Sharanagat. Um, Sharanagat in English. Mm. Huh? Surrender. One who surrendered. Yes, huh? one who surrenders to him. Okay. One who once once who surrendered to him, and he also says he will not give up his uh, lovable, lovables. This thing is there throughout the epic, and the, for that reason, the southern commentators call Ramayana as Sharanagati Shastra. And uh, the, the sloka, the verse, Abhayam Sarva Bhute Bhyaad Adam Yatad Vratam Mama. This verse is taken to be the heart of Valmiki's Ramayana. One who takes refuge in me, I will give security to him against the whole against the whole world. Abhayam sarva Even if the whole world is against him, I will stand there and uh, protect him. This is what he says. And it is also clear in Valmiki's Ramayana, Sita is uh, uh, Rama's uh, uh, love as well as Sharanagats. Okay, that is how Sita herself says about. And Sita says to Hanuman. See, I am here, your Sharanagat waiting. Why Rama is not coming? I have heard if, if, a lot from Rama, he will not give up uh, his Sharanagat. Uh, this is what I heard. Andrasamsyam Parodharmaha Tottayeva Maya Shrutaha. From you I have heard. She is talking to Rama, having Hanuman in front. From, from you I have heard this statement. But why are you not coming? Uh, it is your prime uh, uh, principle to protect me. So, with all these things, uh, this, this is one reason for which Rama cannot give up Sita as a pregnant woman. This is one. Second reason, uh, uh, giving up is against the Veda. And the whole Vedic marriage system is like that. Ma viyaushtam, ihaivastam ma viyaushtam, get not divorced. And maya patya jaradashri yathasaha in Panigrahana Mantra. May you be with me, uh, may we be together till the end of the life. All these kinds of statements uh, in the Vedic ritual. So, it means Rama has transgressed the Veda. That is another thing. Another thing, the third one, very important. Marriage is a pratigya again. The pratigya for which Rama went to the forest for 14 years at his prime age. He can't give up his pratigya at any cost. This is what he, he himself says in many places. Only two themes are there for Ramayana. One Sharanagat Samrachan, another one is Pratigya Paripalam. Both are uh, just uh, transgressed uh, like anything in Uttar Ramayana, which is not the style of Valmiki. Uh, that is why this uh, Uttar Ramayana, not, not just for this reason, this is I think the uh, important reason, the most important reason uh, for which uh, we can't accept this. Um, uh, um, throughout Valmiki's Ramayana, we see how Rama is uh, uh, a hero of Pratigya Paripalan, Sharanagata Samrakshan. Both things are not found in Uttar Ramayana. Uh, for that reason, uh, it is interpolation. Yes. Mm. Okay. Any other reason? Uh, for, for Sita Parityaga or? Uh, uh, no, for uh, Uttar Ram, for you telling that Uttar Ramayana is not written yes. by Valmiki. Yes. Just to, for the sake of. Um, uh, somebody doing tapasya, going and killing, and beheading. Uh, this kind of act Rama cannot do. We see in Aranyakanda, uh, Rama going to Shabari's uh, ashrama. Uh, and Shabari is definitely a person belonging to Shabara clan. Even her name suggests it. 
uh, Shabara means huntress, hunter. And uh, talking about her tapasya, kachite vardhate tapaha, and encouraging her tapasya uh, and uh, accepting her hospitality, all these things are recorded in Valmiki's Ramayana. In fact, Ramayana is a very wonderful literature. Nowhere, nowhere throughout the whole epic, up to Yuddhakanda, you can see any negative statement about Shudra. In such a kind of epic, you can't have this kind of this kind of story. That's a idea. Hmm. Now uh, I come to another one thing hmm. related to this particular aspect. In By the uh, way, hmm. sorry. Hmm. You take the whole stream of stories in India. Maybe the Kavasha Ilusha story found in the Vedic literature, or later day stories like. Uh, uh, what to say, uh, like uh, in Karnataka, they have, what is this person, uh, Kanakadasa. In Kanakadasa story or in Tamil Nadu's Tirupanar or Nandanar story and uh, in North India, yes, in Maharashtra, in Maharashtra Chokamela story. Mm. In all these stories, if uh, there is a clash between, there is, there is a um, conflict between uh, some uh, upper class person and the lower class person, you can always see uh, God supporting the lower class person in India in, in Indian stories. Okay, except this Shambhuka story. <laughs> that is a very very interesting perspective mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. uh, in as you said rightly mm -hmm. uh, later, even later, uh, you you would be knowing very well about that Bodhendra story of uh, him going to Orissa and there a yeah, Brahmin's woman was abducted by Muslims and he had she had to live with that Muslim person for a long time. And after that, uh, she sees the her husband coming there for Tirtha Yatra. She comes back to her husband and then they to uh, absolve the sin of uh, being with another person. All she had to do was tell the name of Rama. And that too, the widow of uh, the Shastri who suggests that, she, sco she scolds the Shastri telling that why you have to recite the name of Rama three times, only one time is enough, she would become pure. right? So, the entire tradition has always been that Rama accepts hmm. and uh, I she, see this, she sorry. Pops, um. I see this Bodhendra story only as a sample in Bodhendra's life. What I guess is he must have done a lot regarding this and I connect his whole Nama Siddhantam with uh, 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 this. In, in the in the chronology, if you see, Bodhendra's time was filled with uh, Mughal Maratha war, a very long Mughal Maratha war, 25 years war, which happened there also in Tanjore, in uh, that place, uh, that fort, Chenji. Chenji port. Uh, in all these places, it happened. While it was happening, uh, he could see a very great threat, upcoming threat, where many Hindus will uh, um, fall and uh, if they are not reverted, it will create a very big problem. Uh, therefore, for that reason only, for that Patito Dharan, uh, he established Nama Siddhanta in uh, South. This is what, this is how I see this. So, this story, this uh, uplifting that woman, it must be a sample of so many things happened at the time of Bodhendra. So, it was an indicator of it, what he a, actually did yes, to the yes, society. Yes. Mm. That is again a very interesting mm -hmm. insight into the whole mm -hmm. thing. Right. Because more or less they were also into this war. For example, um, Bodhendra's uh, uh, close friend, uh, Sridhar Iyawal, uh, he uh, very detached person who worked as a Divan of uh, um, uh, Mysore king. He left everything and came to Thiruvasalur, the village. And here again, after coming here, he again became a divan of uh, uh, Shahaji, uh, Tanjur Shahaji. Uh, and uh, why, if we ask this question, uh, what I guess is, he wrote a book named Shahendra Vilasa about the Shahaji. There he records how Mughal Maratha war happened. And he becoming divan and Mughal Maratha war, they coincide. So, what I feel is only to counsel, only to guide the king, he, he, he was a divan there. And after Mughal Maratha war, he got retired. So, 
on seeing those things happening, Swami Vivekananda generally says, in the West, uh, even if spirituality has to be preached, brought, um, we should talk about uh, the materialistic benefits of that spirituality. Here, if some materialistic concept has to be brought, it should be given a spiritual way. So, to, to, to save, uh, what to say, mm -hmm. uh, to sustain this uh, dharma, to save this dharma, they did not directly talk about the social problems, but they answered, they responded to the social problems in the form of Nama Siddhanta. This is how I view. Mm -hmm. This is a very important view, sir, because uh, now you mentioned uh, Sridhar Ayyavad. So, uh, for the sake of the students here, I would say that uh, Sridhar Ayyavad was a great devotee of Bhagavan. And uh, one day when he was going out uh, for a ceremonial bath, and after that he had to do the tarpan for his uh, ancestors, he sees a person uh, belonging to a marginalized section of the society. Uh, and uh, he sees the person in the very much hungry and uh, totally with, uh, he had fainted, the person had fainted out of hunger. He takes the person to his house and feeds him actually. And so the Brahmins that they say that we won't come to your house because you have uh, defiled. And then what happens, the Ganga comes in his uh, house well. Now I associate this with the, what happened with the Kavashaka. In uh, Kavashaka's story again, the Saraswati comes. As you said, there is a Same perennial uh, yeah. flow of and in the mm. case of uh, Ravidas also when okay. the person came the Ganga came from his uh, mm. the cobblers yes, yes. this and gave the this. Okay. So our rivers have been giving this social emancipation through spirituality right and as you rightly said it is through spirituality that the social emancipation happens in India. That is the basis of uh, social emancipation here. We do not have this uh, fashionable statements and the last question to you sir. Uh, you are also a Vedic scholar and uh, you have given a new interpretation, not a new interpretation actually, it, to me it is the most deepest and the most convincing interpretation for how Vedas are Aparushaya because most of the people think that Vedas are Aparushaya like uh, uh, some Abrahamic revelation that gets downloaded from somewhere. But you have given a very different and beautiful meaning that uh, synchronizes with both uh, Sayana and Sri Aurobindo. Can you? Uh, Yes, explain that and with that we can close it. Again, this is my own view whether uh, it, it is up to the people to accept it or not. Uh, Veda is Aparusheya, uh, it is because Veda does not have any person's prejudice. Uh, this is our view. Uh, uh, like uh, we have various prejudices found in the world, almost in uh, Almost in all literary works which I have seen, which are as big as Veda, we see uh, some kind of prejudice entering into it. Uh, for example, uh, women are filthy or a particular caste is bad or this language people are wrong, uh, persons from this country will be very bad that kind of prejudice and uh, when we go through the Vedic mantras, mantra very important, uh, when we go through the Samhitas of Vedas, I, I never see any kind of prejudice expressed anywhere in the Vedic literature regarding women or a particular caste or a creed or, a, or even a religion or even a faith, you never see any kind of prejudice found there. Since Veda is a prejudice free literature, it is Aparushaya, point number one. Point number two, regarding dharma, guiding, dharma, guiding uh, for dharma, prejudice, -leaf, prejudice free literature has to be the, uh, should be given the first position. Uh, the greatest pramana, Veda is the greatest pramana for dharma, is because one who is uh, victim to the prejudices, cannot see dharma as it is. You have raga and dvesha. He cannot see, he will favor somebody, uh, some, somebody else. So, without that, if uh, uh, a prejudice free literature is available, which can be the greatest pramana for uh, dharma. More a text is prejudice free, 
or more a philosopher a prejudice free we can um, uh, take him to be a, a greater pramana for dharma that is what i view mm -hmm. so thank you so much for this conversation uh, thanks